Good afternoon, everybody. That's Media Center of Ukraine, Odessa. We begin our today's briefing. We have Minister of Defense of Ukraine and the Kingdom of the Netherlands, Alexei Reznikov and Kaisa Ongrin. Welcome here. Please, Mr. Alexei, tell us about conclusions of this visit to Odessa. Good afternoon, everybody. I see familiar faces, not for the first time here, and uh, I'm happy again. Uh, to represent uh, to you a huge friend of Ukraine and my personal friend, uh, Ms. Paisa Olongrin, who is uh, the Minister of Defense of Friendly Kingdom of the Netherlands. And it is not her first time in Ukraine. We already met her in Kyiv, in capital, but today we have an honor to complete our trip on the south of Ukraine. Yesterday we attended Mykolaiv and we showed very interesting places and places which are today evidences of uh, uh, impact of terrorist state destroyed universities, schools, administrations, buildings. But at the same time, Ms. Kaisa saw that uh, life is going on, Ukrainians are restoring and they are going to gain victory in this warfare and restore Ukraine. I would like to recall that thanks to assistance of the people of the Netherlands, uh, government and Ministry of Defense of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, we received uh, timely quite important stuff as and armament uh, as, for example, Panzer Haubitzer 2000 joined venture with Germany. That's a 155 caliber artillery systems, which are very powerful. I would like also to recall to those people who hear us in Odessa that due to Harpoon project, we have saved Black Sea alongside the coast of Odessa and Odessa region. Uh, due to Harpoon's uh, among the rest, uh, we were able to liberate Snake Island, which is uh, uh, pivotal for further construction of Grain Corridor, which today allows Ukraine to continue its economic activity to uh, provide a uh, grocery of our uh, agro-industrial complex to Asian and African countries, which uh, have extremely need in this to uh, prevent uh, uh, starvation. Therefore, we have this link from Harpoon to uh, fat people in Asia and Africa. It is very important. I would like to recall that we are saying to everybody and we know that it is important to improve our air defense system and the best uh, systems of air defense. You heard, for example, about NASAMS, but missiles to NASAMS are also given by our friends from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I'm sure that you heard about Patriot, which was proclaimed firstly by uh, the government of the United States, and this initiative was supported by the government of the Germany and government of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And nowadays we have training and preparation of the crews, and we are receiving launchers for Patriots from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. I would like to recall that we have very interesting armored vehicles, M113, which are famous and which are serving on the front line, but they have more Modernizations, Netherlands, modernization UPR, which is uh, highly estimated by our uh, service people because that's protected armored capsules, which are saving lives of our service people. And I received numerous uh, histories about uh, mines and shellings, and due to this Netherlands thing, uh, we were able to save lives of our service people. Nowadays, we uh, know about tank uh, coalition to which the Kingdom of the Netherlands joined, and uh, in our uh, so-called zoo, we will hear roar of leopards and uh, part of these leopards were raised uh, directly in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. We are going to have some new uh, stuff from uh, Miss Kaisa, which we will hear today, but we were conscious about this meeting and this visit to the south of Ukraine. It was conscious because that's our approach and access to the sea. Here we have Black Sea and we are also looking at Sea of Adam and we are sure that we will gain victory in this warfare and after our victory we will restore freedom of shipment in both Black Sea and Sea of Azov and support of uh, the country which is thought to be the first one in the world, one of the first one in the world, with real fleet, uh, trade fleet and military fleet, because uh, exactly Netherlands ships were traveling around the world and opening even so-called Mauriki Island in India Ocean, 
which is related to a famous head of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Therefore, experience of the Netherlands fleet is extremely important for Ukrainian fleet. As two naval countries, we will have such kind of partnership and uh, unity. Yesterday we heard a uh, report of uh, Admiral Neish Papa, commander of naval forces, who underscored needs of our fleet. And I have hoped that the Kingdom of the Netherlands will support uh, Ukraine as a naval state. On this, I will pause and give a floor to Ms. Kaisa. Thank you very much, uh, Oleksia. Thank you for, for your kind words. And it's really an honor to be here in Odessa with you today and that you have accompanied me on this two-day uh, visit to your country and especially uh, the South, the Mykolaiv and Odessa. Uh, and let me start by saying that I have the deepest respect for the Ukrainian people, for the Ukrainian armed forces and also, Alexei, for you personally. Uh, we see your fight, your fight for freedom, your fight for European values that we share. Uh, and the way that you are standing up against Putin's aggression, uh, we all admire deeply. And uh, from here, uh, we are at the World Heritage Site, of course, I would like to reiterate that you are not alone. Uh, we stand with Ukraine and we will continue also our military support for as long as it takes. You have shown me yesterday, also in Mykolaiv, how, to, how you repelled Russian attacks there. And we know that the fight is going on every day, as we see it uh, in Bakhmut. Uh, and in Mykolaiv, uh, once again, like I did before in Kiev, I have witnessed with my own eyes the devastation caused by Russian attacks. And it is very important that we never get used to these images, that we never get used to war, and that we continue the military support to make sure that Russia cannot win this war. And that is why the Netherlands has sent uh, capabilities such as air defense, as you mentioned, also a um, uh, uh, contribution to a very important Patriot uh, system, uh, self-propelled howitzers and, and, and tanks. Uh, the Dutch part of the support last year only is worth more than 1.2 billion. And what I see also is that during the training, the military training that we are contributing to, Close ties are growing between our armed forces, and that is also important. So we could say that the strongest weapon we have is unity and solidarity, and like we have shown it also in the tank coalition that uh, Oleksiy mentioned just now. And last week we also met in Stockholm, and there the EU countries underlined and also agreed to deliver more ammunition. And we know that speed and scale is now of the essence in this war. Um, and, of course, we will continue to train the Ukrainian recruits and we will continue to train the troops on new capabilities and new system. We are sharing knowledge uh, and expertise among each other. And not only will this have an immediate effect in the battlefield, it will also be a solid foundation for the future of Ukraine's armed forces. forces that will have to be ba based on European and NATO standards. And today, we discuss the importance of coastal defense, of having a free and open sea, being both seafaring nations, on having trade lanes, and the protection of the grain exports also over the longer term. At the Netherlands, we have a long tradition as a seafaring nation, and we understand the strategic and um, economic importance of Odessa's harbor for food supplies, for trade, uh, and as a connection to the rest of the world. And to secure safe passage in the Black Sea, the Netherlands will be providing Ukraine with two naval support vessels to Alkmaar-class mine hunters. And this autumn we will start training Ukrainian crews on how to use these vessels, and we will do this in close cooperation with Belgium and other allies. And the vessels will be ready to use in 2025. So this is an investment in the future of the armed forces and especially of the Navy. In addition, the Netherlands will also be providing bridging capability in the form of M3 bridge and ferrying systems, as well as drone detection radar systems. So in conclusion, we will continue our steadfast support to Ukraine. We will not let Russia get away with this brutal 
and illegal war. Uh, and we see your fight as a fight for a democratic future for Ukraine, but also as a fight for the freedom and safety of Europe. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. We have some time for three questions per every minister. I see the first question, so I'm given a mic. So please represent yourself and pose the question. Good afternoon, Mr. Minister. I had a question regarding um, provision of uh, advanced weaponry from allies, specifically the United States. There seems to be cracks in unity, little cracks in the U.S. Uh, bipartisan coalition when it comes to Ukraine. But my question is, do you feel the only way you can win this Russian aggression is with those advanced fighter jets that you've been asking the West for? And then, Madam Minister, if I can, um, you talked about the provision of these uh, 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 ships, these vessels, not coming till 2025. Some Ukrainian officials have said there's too little coming too late. Can you maybe describe the timeline there? Thank you. Oh, sorry, you want me to start? Yeah. Thank you. Um, let, on, on the second question, uh, too little, too late. It's speed is of the essence. Uh, and that is why last week in, in Stockholm uh, we agreed upon the delivery of more ammunition for Ukraine in a joint effort, which is very concrete and where we have a direct uh, conversation also with industry on how to speed this up. Uh, and every uh, request that Ukraine does, we assess uh, in, of course, the most speedy way. So I agree that uh, speed is, is absolutely crucial. Uh, at the same time, uh, as, as we have discussed also, uh, Ukraine is now transitioning its armed forces. Uh, there will be a moment also after this war uh, when the defense still has, has to be strong and when it has to be with capabilities from Europe, from the United States on NATO standards. Uh, so while fighting the war, I think uh, the Ukrainian armed, armed forces are doing an incredible effort in also thinking strategically about how to build uh, a sustainable uh, armed forces for, for the future. Uh, and for instance, the issue of the mines in the Black Sea is a very pres pressing issue now, but it will not be um, uh, it will not be over once the war is over. So these vessels, these mine hunters, uh, are an investment in the future of the Ukrainian armed forces. And at the same time, we are, of course, providing other capabilities that Ukraine needs as soon as possible. Yes. Uh, I will allow myself to add a response to Ms. Kaisa. Uh, the logic is uh, the next. Uh, I would say we should consider three components. The first component is uh, time of training of the crew, which uh, will serve in future on this uh, mine hunter. These are complex systems which should be for which our service people should be ready. The second, while we have open face of this warfare passage of ships in accordance with Montreal Convention uh, of military ships is impossible through Bosphorus. So even considering readiness of crews tomorrow, this ship won't be able to pass because Montreal Convention this stuff. And sad factor, we are sure in our victory, but Victory of Ukraine, which will uh, be focused on liberation of all temporarily occupied territories, this victory will also stand for the next phase. That's creation of security architecture in the world, or at least in Europe, which will stand for some security guarantees for Ukraine. While we will not understand these security guarantees, and while Russia won't understand this, requirements. Demining of Black Sea will be dangerous. Therefore, first of all, we have to create security architecture and security guarantees for Ukraine. Then we will understand with our partners and the whole world that freedom of shipment in uh, Black Sea uh, takes place. There is no threat from the Russian fleet. Then we will have sense 
in demining. So that's my remark. Why 2025 is realistic term? However, maybe it even will happen sooner because our service people show that uh, they master any system quite quickly, artillery, tank, air defense equipment, and I'm sure that our naval representatives will master these mine hunters quite quickly, and then we will uh, may shift this term closer. Uh, now, turning to your question to me, fighter jets, which is an uh, aviational platform and is necessary for us as improvement and reinforcement of our air defense system. Because uh, lack of systems uh, surface to air lack of Patriot, Nassam, Skirt Island, Gepard, uh, Iris Sea systems, Stinger systems and Stark Tricks. Aerial platforms are also elements of air defense. Therefore, first of all, we are struggling on the diplomatic uh, front uh, to persuade our partners to take decision for main uh, battlefield aircraft as a main asset for protection and it doesn't stop us in our counteroffensive which we are planning for the occupation of our lands. But uh, answering your question, reception of uh, aircraft as soon as possible, we save as many human lives as possible and in this way it will be able to improve our offensive capabilities. Why? Because every general is being taught in academy that if you are going to conduct serious offensive, you have to complete three factors. The first one is to switch the enemy to defense. The second factor is to suppress its superiority in the air. And third factor is to begin to destroy its supply routes and its stocks. In these three tasks, uh, two factors are about aviation. So as soon we will receive combat modern aircraft capable of countering aviation of Russians, it will be better for us. So thank you. The next question, please. This is one question for both ministers. To what extent, if any, does the continuation of the provision of Western aid to Ukraine depend upon Ukraine demonstrating battlefield successes in its counteroffensive operations this spring and summer. In other words, do you see any cause for concern that political pressure could be influencing Ukrainian military decisions? Well, I would like to turn it around. Uh, and I think that uh, one thing is sure, that Ukrainian successes depend uh, upon our commitment uh, to continue the provision of training, ammunition and weapons and capabilities. Uh, and uh, we are very confident also uh, because of what we have seen in the past year uh, that Ukrainians uh, very successfully make use uh, of uh, what we are providing them with. So that would be my answer. Thank you. Uh, I will add uh, that we have already demonstrated that we are able to be successful with those stock of weaponry which we had when we conducted a deoccupation of Kiev, Chernihiv and Suma region. We showed that we are able to deoccupy Snake Island with 155 artillery, harpoons and Ukrainian Neptunes and we opened possibility for grain initiative. Uh, we showed that by having uh, uh, vehicles and artillery, 155, uh, HIMARS, uh, MLRS, armed personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles, we were able to liberate Kharkiv region and bridge through uh, Kharkiv region. Uh, we showed that uh, via preparation of counteroffensive in Kherson region, almost without losses or with small losses, we liberated Kherson and eastern bank of uh, Dnipro. Uh, river. Uh, Russians are very good learners, so they are already in defense positions. Yesterday we had briefing and our generals and Mr. General Moskalo and Admiral Nish Papa showed us places where they are already on fortifications, by the way, in Crimea as well. This means that the Russians are being prepared for defense. 
they trust that Ukrainians will be in counteroffense. And that's a good sign because that's materialization of environment we are creating future and they've already lost. If they in their special military operation are transferring to protection and defense, they are already losers. Therefore, I am sure that support of our partners from Rammstein Club, consisting of uh, uh, 54 countries as minimum, that's twice more than uh, NATO alliance. They also want victory of Ukraine because they've already invested in this. And the main rule is that when you made investment, you have to believe in success and continue to support your project. Therefore, I am sure that we are demonstrating our success and partners trust us. That's the main point. But I think that the main mission of this assistance is to protect lives of Ukrainians because Ukrainians showed themselves as uh, uh, people struggling for European values. And uh, uh, Europeans de facto are struggling together with us via this support. Therefore, I trust in this support and I have no doubt and no concerns. Thank you. The next question, please. Good afternoon, Suspilna Odessa. I have a question to Mr. Oleksii. Currently, we know that the grain initiative is prolonged for 60 days, except of 120, which is not in accordance with bilateral agreement. Is Ukraine going to uh, agree for this agreement? To be honest, I am not a counterpart of this negotiation. My con colleague Alexander Kobrakov is dealing with this and also my colleagues uh, from military line. I am not acknowledged with nuances, but I have a feeling uh, that uh, there were several uh, efforts to uh, provoke and compromise this agreement from the Russian side. And this provocation brought about nothing for them because we have principal position of the Secretary General of UN and Mr. President Erdogan, uh, who are partners of uh, Ukraine in this agreement and correspondingly principal position of Ukraine itself in this agreement. Therefore, you have always asked you what is the key objective or key value. In this case, the key value is uh, to give food to those people who are living in Africa and Asia who may suffer from uh, starvation. And uh, we may do it with Ukrainian grain, and that's our task. And uh, the matter of 60 days, 90 days, that's a matter of trades at the negotiation table. Therefore, my point of view is that principal point is not to stop this agreement and continue supply of Ukrainian grain products to the civilized world. Thank you. The next question, please. Uh, okay, then uh, I will ask Ms. Kaisa, uh, tell me please if you see during this visit in which way and where our moment uh, uh, or special assets uh, given by uh, the Kingdom of the Netherlands were used. Not disclose, of course, sorry, any operational information, but uh, as uh, Oleksiy uh, just explained, uh, we have been active in, in, in exactly those fields, I think, where Ukraine has expressed um, uh, the need. So, uh, for instance, uh, in, in air defense, uh, and I think um, I'm very impressed uh, every, every time uh, by the devastation from the beginning of the full-scale uh, invasion, the devastation caused by at the time. But then since, of course, the Russians have um, started these large-scale air attacks that are going on until this very day that really serve no military purpose, uh, that, are, that are really targeted on the, on the crucial energy infrastructure mostly, but also hit uh, civilian uh, targets, which um, uh, in my opinion is uh, really uh, unacceptable. So continuing the support uh, in the air defense is extremely important. And at the same time, knowing how um, the fight in the, at the front is going on, and of course also how uh, we see that Russia is preparing uh, for a counterattack, it was important to start this uh, tank coalition and to get results of the tank coalition um, because uh, we know that is a capability that the Ukrainian 
argue, will continue to uh, to need. Uh, and uh, to to add to that, um, I think talking uh, to each other as also about uh, the, all the various types of capabilities that Ukraine is now working with, they're doing an admirable job. Uh, but it's also, it's also very fragmented. So, of course, in this transition, uh, you will, uh, you will uh, have to, to focus more also on our side, on the European side and, and the NATO side, to get more standardization and especially interoperability. Uh, also with uh, Ukraine, that is an important partner country uh, to us. And that is why I am glad that we have now also uh, taken the step of providing uh, uh, the mine hunters, uh, where it's not only uh, about the, the, the vessels themselves, but it's also about the expertise. Uh, and like Alexa said, we will start the training as soon as possible, so it'll be in the second half of this year. Ukrainians will be uh, trained uh, on this specific capability. And there we also develop, of course, trust uh, and knowledge uh, between uh, the, uh, the armed forces of the Netherlands uh, and Ukraine, uh, which is something that in the future cooperation uh, is also very important. And let me use this case and uh, ask a question to Ms. Kaiser. <laughs> I know your answer as of yesterday, but uh, today we have one more day of the visit in Ukraine. Tell me, please, which is the brightest visit of your visit and what is the biggest memory for yesterday and today? Thank you for that question. Um, uh, well, I think um, yesterday um, it was also a reminder of uh, how this large-scale invasion started. Uh, and that at that moment, also the Ukrainian people, in this case, we talked about Mikolaev and the importance of, of the Mikolaev uh, resistance, uh, because then the Russians were not able, they were able to take Kherson, but not Mikolaev. And that means that also the road to Odessa was cut off. And this was due, of course, to military uh, force, but also of civilians. Uh, and that shows, I think, the strength of uh, the Ukrainian people and uh, also the creativity of the Ukrainian people. Uh, and now we are more than one year after this large-scale invasion. Uh, and the fact that we are here now in Odessa, uh, which has uh, uh, not been taken by uh, the Russians, where people are finding ways also, for instance, with uh, the grain deal uh, to continue uh, this uh, important role of Ukraine, which is important not only to, to Ukraine, it's important to the world, uh, to Africa, to Asia and, and other parts of the world, that Ukraine can, the grain can continue to leave uh, Ukraine. Uh, and that is also where I feel that the Ukrainian spirit is really unbroken. Uh, and I'm uh, really humbled uh, by seeing that here today in Odessa, uh, yesterday in, in Mykolaiv. Uh, and also, I must say, I'm, your country is a, is a vast country. Uh, and um, uh, that is, uh, it, it's part of the European family. Uh, and I think uh, while we are, of course, Minister of, of Defense, are very much focused on, on the armed forces, uh, the war and what is going to happen after the war, there is so much more than that. Uh, also, uh, for instance, in the field of economy, uh, Odessa is an example of that, huge importance uh, for, for the economy. Uh, and so being able, while focusing on defense, also seeing a little bit of that has made a big impression on me today and yesterday. Thank you. So, uh, please, uh, the next question. As usual, uh, questions, uh, uh, such questions are being posted at the end of the press conference, but I have two short uh, questions to both ministers. First one is probably to Mr. Alexei Reznikov. Uh, are there any states uh, which uh, promised uh, mine hunters, uh, as the Netherlands uh, does uh, for Ukraine, we need that uh, neat and problem of uh, mine hunters uh, took place a long time before full-scale invasion. And the second question is, as far as I remember, Ukraine addressed the Netherlands uh, for F-16s aircraft. What is the fault uh, face of this uh, request? Uh, about aircraft, as far as I understand, that's a question to Ms. Kaiser. 
So uh, thank you for this question. You gave me a good pass. Uh, now we have trend for creation of some coalitions on the behalf of Ukraine. And we had a tank initiative, which became tank uh, coalition. And before this, we have artillery initiative and artillery coalition later on. And uh, uh, due to today's uh, um, statement of uh, Ms. Kaisa that we are going to receive mine hunters, we may say that uh, we are establishing ship coalition because the United Kingdom has already uh, given us uh, such uh, uh, mine hunters. They are already with two Ukrainian official crews and with under the flag of naval forces of the armed forces of Ukraine, uh, which means that today in naval fleet we already have mine hunters from our friends from the United Kingdom. Also, crews at the ships uh, from Netherlands will also join them and also uh, I've heard about Belgium involved in this process. So as minimum uh, three countries are already part of this ship naval coalition. So Ukraine will develop its fleet. Also we know that we are uh, constructing Ukrainian fleet in Turkey. So thank you for this uh, question. We may be brave in our statement that we already have ship coalition. Uh, indeed, I'm very happy to be part of it. Um, uh, about the uh, F-16s and, and uh, jet fighters in general, we have spoken about that before. Uh, and um, uh, we consider it uh, really a debate about having uh, the best possible air defense uh, in different period also of time. Uh, so it all starts with uh, we're air defense now, and, it start, and then you start thinking also about uh, the future. Uh, and I have uh, told Alexei that this is, has to be part of a careful consideration also with our allies. Uh, so other countries that have the same uh, capability, uh, if of course it's an American, American capability. And this discussion is going on, and um, uh, well, you know, uh, this is uh, like, like many other issues. Um, uh, sometimes uh, you can start a debate, but it's better to have that debate behind closed doors. And that is the stage where we are in now. Thank you. If we have time for one more question, yep, just only one, please, Mr. Michael, and that will be the last for today. A question. Madam Minister, can we take advantage of your presence here? I have a question about MH17, oh. the investigation. Uh, by the way, I was part of the OSC when the plane came down. Um, I think a lot of families who I'm in contact with were surprised that the Netherlands, which led the investigation, the joint investigation, suspended it, uh, I guess because of they, they felt that for the time being, they've looked at everything they possibly can. Nonetheless, it appears there still must be a lot of evidence out there. I know a lot of the families really want to go higher up the chain of command to find out who is responsible for firing that Buk missile. Do you think the investigation will be resumed once more uh, evidence or reason is found? Thank you. Well, exactly as you said, uh, it has been suspended. Uh, and the reason that it has been suspended is that we have turned every stone. Uh, and we have used every legal way that we possibly could. Uh, to try uh, to uh, hold those responsible also accountable. And you know also that we have been successful in that way. Um, so the suspension, um, the, the only reason for that is that we know that there is no way that we at this moment can take the leads any further than we have done so far. Uh, and we have been also in intense contact, of course, with the families on, on this. Uh, but we have pledged at the time to do everything we can to leave no stone unturned, and that is what we will continue to do. So as soon as any opportunity would present itself, uh, then we would uh, be able to reopen the investigation. And I think uh, um, uh, that uh, because of uh, also uh, the cooperation that we've had with Ukraine ever since uh, the MH17 was, uh, was shut down has been excellent and has formed uh, an extra tie between our two countries. Thank you. Thank you for briefing. Thank you for announcing. Telegram channel Odessa Media Center Ukraine. May be interesting. Just as interesting as today. Thank you.